All right, friends, we are back and we are going to be working on another Christmas inspired project, but this time it's going to be a big one. And when I say big, I mean massive. These are the plans for it. I've been checking this thing out for months, been waiting, and I finally ordered them and they came in. It's for a 15 foot tall reindeer made out of three quarter inch plywood that goes on your lawn and all of your neighbors are going to see it. You can't miss it. So these are the plans. I'm going to get them unraveled, take a look at them, see what we're working with. And I'm going to drop the link for these below so you guys can order them too if you'd like. So let's take a look. So the plans come on three long sheets of paper that are 96 inches long. So they fit on a full sheet of plywood. And here's the breakdown of all the parts for each sheet of plywood you'll need five and a half, three quarter inch sheets of plywood. And there are all of the body parts that you'll be cutting out on each sheet. So they show you where to lay them out. The only thing that I wish they didn't do is they kind of interlock parts. So you can't just cut them out. The lines for certain parts are woven in between other parts. I guess that was to save paper. I wish they would have just sent it with five and a half sheets of paper that you would just trace out on each individual piece of plywood but we're going to make it work so one thing that i will mention is when you order this online they give you an option to purchase a piece of carbon transfer paper that would go underneath the plans on top of the plywood so you would just put the carbon paper on top of the plywood put your plans on top of that and then you can just trace out and it'll leave the lines on the plywood we didn't order that so we went ahead and trace everything with this brown paper that we use for painting. That way I don't have to cut into this. I can cut this and not worry about messing anything up in case I did something wrong. So I would suggest ordering that carbon paper as well, but we're gonna make it work. Let's go. I thought the table was a little closer than it was. So they do recommend using exterior grade plywood. Uh, the hardware store that I went to actually only had two sheets of that. So I bought two of that and then just four sheets of some regular three quarter inch plywood. I'm going to be painting them with exterior paint and it's only going to be up for a couple months so hopefully the weather won't do too much damage to it. So I'm going to use those exterior grade plywoods for the legs. The way that the reason being because they're going to be on the ground, maybe water, soil, whatever gets up on them. Hopefully it'll help with not deteriorating that but we're going to give it a try. Alright so we're going to start with the back legs and here is our trace that we did of all of the parts. So as you can see, these back legs are massive. Almost takes up the full sheet in the length wise. So you're gonna be able to cut two legs, two of the back legs out of one sheet. So we'll cut one here and then we'll cut another one there. And I've noticed that with this paper, if I just take a carpenter's pencil and I trace the line, it actually indents the wood underneath and gives a nice clean guide to cut on with the jigsaw. So this is what you would be doing with the transfer paper anyway, uh, but I'm finding that this indents the wood just fine so I can see the entire length of the, the leg. So you can see the faint line right here. That is the outline that I traced. I think I'm gonna go back over it with a marker, just so when I'm cutting it with the jigsaw and it's throwing a bunch of sawdust, I can still see my line. There is the first 
back leg. So I'm probably going to cut this one out. Then I'm going to flip it over here just so I can trace that. It'd be a little easier tracing around that as opposed to that piece of paper again. So the only real tool that you'll need for this whole project is a jigsaw and maybe a sander to clean up some edges and stuff later on. So I am going to get cutting out this leg and then I'm going to flip it over and trace it on this side. That is a huge leg. So now I'm gonna flip it over here and then trace another one out so we'll have both back legs done. So there we go, we got both back legs cut out. So we're one sheet of plywood down. I'm gonna to continue to cut out the rest but I'm not gonna bore you with the same drawing and cutting and drawing and cutting. So as soon as I get done with this, I'll check back in with you guys. All right, we are making progress, but check out these antlers. Those things are massive. That is it. So I've got all the pieces cut. There's 14 pieces in total. It was five and a half sheets of three quarter inch plywood. So now I'm gonna get all the edges sanded down and then these things will be ready to get some paint on them. So we got all the body parts sanded and laid out in the paint room. And now we're going to start our painting. And we used Valspar Storm Coat. It was only about $29 per gallon. In total, painting both sides, it took us right under three gallons. So I would suggest getting three gallons. Now we did use our HVLP gun for it. All right. So we got one coat on everything. And it just soaked it up. I figured it would because it's at, uh, plywood. See, it just soaked everything up. So we're probably gonna get two more coats on everything and then flip them and do the same on the other side. If you don't have a paint sprayer, a paint roller will do just as fine. One full day of painting later, we got all the parts loaded in the back of the truck and we're gonna drive up to the front of the property and here we are putting this thing together. The instructions that come with the plans are pretty self-explanatory on assembling this, but I will recommend having at least three to four people because this thing is tall and heavy. All right, friends, there she is. I don't think you can get a great idea of its size, so let me go stand next to it real quick. The final touch was to add this solar powered spotlight so that you can see it at night. Thank you all for tuning in and be sure to subscribe so you can catch